Hello everyone and welcome back to Typical City International Break. Don't you just hate it? It's boring, incredibly boring and it always comes with the caveat of 115 charges and all that nonsense, a bit of transfer nonsense as well, very, very little of it is actually true. And then of course you get a bit of drama, sprinkling a bit of drama as well in there, why not while you're at it? Because we're bored, we're bored, we're waiting for what really matters on the pitch and we're nearly there Blues, we're nearly there, we're going to be there soon, Arsenal this Sunday, come and join me for the watch long by the way, I will be doing a watch long, it's going to be fiery. It's going to be feisty. We're going to do it. We're going to do him. But now, instead of that, rather than talking about the Arsenal game, we've got to talk about Cancelo and Pep Guardiola. Who is the villain in this drama, this soap opera that's being... The narrative is being very much controlled by Cancelo, to be fair. All of the communication being put into the public seems to always come out of his mouth. His mouth only. But he is now calling Pep Guardiola a liar. An out-and-out -out liar. You've lied, Pep Guardiola, apparently. Apparently, we have to wait and see. Well, I say wait and see. We'll probably never find out whether it was actually true or not. In-house problems at Manchester City between Pep, his staff, the treatment of uh, of Cancelo is not in, in in Cancelo's eyes to be a good treatment of a player, according to him himself. We have to wait and see, but. I want to be fair to him in this video as well, because I'm going to split this video into two parts, basically. Let's talk about the player, and then let's talk about the person, because I don't know if you've seen that Alvarez documentary on City Plus recently, where Cheeky Bergenstein um, talked about the, the signing of Alvarez, and how much they went into the detail of him, the person, the, the what he's like as a human being, his personality, you know, and uh, what what's he like, what's his values, things like that. Important, really, really important, and people totally disregard that nowadays especially younger fans. I notice it's very much younger fans tend to not care about what they do off the field and the treatment of their club. Fans have this tendency to fall in love with players and disregard what how they treat the club. Whereas I'm very much a Manchester City fan. I am no one particular player fan. There are those types of fans out there that follow the player wherever the player goes and support that club wherever that player goes. It makes no sense to me. I was never brought up like that. I was brought up to support the club. You know, Manchester City were there before I was born and they'll very likely be there once I'm dead as well. So I, would, I wouldn't worry about uh, Manchester City and the, the long-term future of their you know, future and what that's going to to mean for the club. But in terms of the player, you know, he's he's got a short career. He's got to make the most of it. And as far as I'm concerned, there is a there's a bit of a bad apple there. There is an attitude problem, you know. So, but first, let's talk about the player because the player is a really good player. Let's have it right. An incredible player. So I'm just going to pop his stats on the screen. This is Barcelona. So let's start with Barcelona where he's doing what he's doing well. Let's be fair to the guy because, I mean... And let's be fair to what he did at Manchester City as well. We can't forget that. Some of those sumptuous crosses that he was putting into the box. Delightful. Delightful player. He's really, really good. He, you know what he's bringing to the game. Technicality is there. Going forward, you know, never in question. His ability to create a, a, and link up play those triangles and the networks of passes that he can create. That inverted fullback role that he sort of made his own um, for a period of time at Manchester City, at least, until Nathan Ake started playing a little bit more and Rico Lewis started playing a bit more and then he spat his dummy out. Before that, the player was a, a very good player. That cross to, to Whirling Haaland in the uh, Champions League against Borussia Dortmund, where Haaland just defied human physics and leapt like a, a gazelle and stuck his foot out and put it into the top corner, where really he should be going with his head, but Erling Haaland doesn't do things normally. He went with his foot. An incredible goal that was. But don't forget, the guy makes mistakes defensively at the other end of the pitch. I always had concerns when we had a job to do. You know, he becomes a luxury player at times when you're going up against your top elite football teams. You know, your top teams, your Real Madrids and your, your, your uh, I'm trying to think, of Manchester City, of course. Uh, other play, other teams out there, you're Bayern Munich, you know, and I would say Barcelona, but they're not really top, top anymore, are they? You know, Arsenal, Liverpool, these sort of clubs. That If he was going up against these players, I would be a bit worried about having him in defence. We saw it at Anfield, halfway line, suicidal, defending against Mo Salah, completely just capitulated in his brain, just completely went wrong, leapt into a ball that was never there to be won, Mo Salah spins in, makes it 1-0 Liverpool, killed us, that is, ki killed us, same season, Fulham at home in the Etihad, go and look at the game if you don't remember, we go down to 10 men. Penalty given away. Cancelo just pushing some guy in the back for absolutely no reason. I think it was uh, Cordova Reed. I can't remember, or was it? I can't remember who it was, which Fulham player it was, but 
Stupid defending from Cancelo. And thanks to Erling Haaland, 97th minute penalty, we actually turned that game round with 10 men against Fulham and won the game 2-1. Still, those mistakes were there in his game. So... I was never convinced as a as a defender, you know, but what I would like to say in, in Cancelo's defence is imagine him doing that Kyle Walker role this season where Kyle Walker's been asked to go forward and get involved in the attacking side of the game more than I'm comfortable with. And I think it's like those two players are very opposing, polarising fullbacks. If you talk about Kyle Walker versus Cancelo, you know, Kyle Walker's the, the, the defensive side of the game. Yeah, he's got that down to a T. Asking him to go forward and getting involved creatively... I'm not that comfortable with that. And he's done reasonably well considering that is not his natural game. He's done reasonably well considering that. You have to factor in that is not his normal game. He's being asked to do things that he can't, he's not normally been asked to do. And he's done okay. Okay, Walker. But put Cancelo in that role. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that would be such a better role. More suited for a player like Cancelo, in my opinion. But then there's been games this season where Kyle Walker's defensive attributes, you know, he's going to go up against potentially, if he's not injured, of course, Vinicius Jr. In Real, against Real Madrid. We're going to need him. We played him in both legs last season against Real Madrid to handle the likes of Vinicius Jr. You imagine Cancelo dealing with Vinicius Jr. <laughs> it gets squeaky bum time, doesn't it? It's not, not so comfortable. So the player is a very good player. So I've left his stats on the on the on the screen there for you to see already. But there, thirty two appearances, two thousand five hundred minutes, four goals, four assists, ten big chances created, five teams of the week. Really good, you know, creative numbers I've put on there because that's his game. Um, really, really good. You know, he's having a good season at Barcelona. He's twenty nine years old. Don't forget as well. So, I mean, the things that he's come out with, by the way, the the words that he's chosen to put into the media. I mean, he's making he's he's not mincing his words. He's making it abundantly clear for everyone to understand that he wants his move. He doesn't want to come back to Manchester City. He's made it very very clear with these words. We didn't want you to begin with, mate. You were kicked out in the first place. You know, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your time's done. But if it wasn't already clear, he's he's very much done with Manchester City. So it's uh, it's it's an interesting one. But the fact is, he's trying to drag the the image of the club as well as the image of Pep Guardiola through the mud on his way out of the door. Just go out respectfully. I'll, t I'll tell you what he said in a minute. But let's have a quick look at his uh, Bayern Munich stats, which were never quite as good. He didn't really settle at Bayern Munich quite as well as he has done at Bayern, uh, Barcelona, but he did okay. These are his Bayern Munich stats. Of course, this is when he joined halfway through the season, don't forget. Um, so he'd already been playing Manchester City and Champions League football as well. These are all his Bayern Munich stats alone, though. So 21 appearances, 1,200 plus minutes, a goal, six assists, five big chances created, and one team of the week. Not great, but there was that picture. That, uh, don't forget that picture as well, where he was already reportedly falling out with Thomas Tuchel. You know, he didn't get the minutes he wanted. He didn't start a particular game. Then there, then there is a, a photograph that's got the, the, the association with it that he's sulking. Because he didn't get the minutes that he wants, so th there is a there is a personality there that's quite difficult to manage, an ego that is difficult to handle there. And why, you know, you look at the likes of uh, Alvarez, for example, the player that we signed there, the person that we signed there, the person like Erling Haaland. You know, they're not spitting their dummies out, players. You know, your Bernardo Silva, all these types of players that City work on. You know, they they do their homework, they vet these players. Manchester City do. You know, they look at the player first, of course. The player is the most important thing, and then it's like well what's the person like is he going to cause problems is he going to settle well what's he like traveling is he going to be a, a family man is he going to settle with the rest of the squad you know and things like that you look at the likes of Bernardo Silva as a prime example of a player that's reportedly being linked away from the club you know with suggestions that he actually wants to move now with his with his wife saying that he wants to move as well and and, and twisting his arm when he's at home over dinner or, or whatever it may be she might twist his arm in other ways you never know but in terms of the player, he's just so respectful, so respectful of the club. You know, he just never, he never spits his dummy out. You never hear him coming out with these sort of quotes. So I'll, I'll read it to you now. Lies were told. I've never been a bad companion for them, and you can ask either Ake or Rico. That that that's like a, a teenage girl speaks like that. You know, and you can ask them. Go and ask them. Go and ask them. You can ask. You can ask Ake. You can ask Rico. That's pathetic, mate. Talking like the lang the, the choice of language here. You can tell he's. You know, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Uh, I don't have any superiority or inferiority complex towards them, but that's their manager's opinion. 
I think Man City were a bit ungrateful to me when they said that because I was a very important player in the years I was there. No denying that, absolutely was. 100% was, and he, and he provided a lot of success and quality on the pitch that was a joy to watch at times. No denying that. There is no denying that. Uh, I never failed in my commitment to the club, to the fans, and I always gave everything. I remember a time when I was robbed and attacked, and the next day I was playing at the Emirates against Arsenal. These are things you don't forget. I left my wife and daughter alone at home, terrified. Awful. That's terrible. You know, just the circumstances. That's not City's fault, though. He makes it sound like it's our fault that, you know, if he said, I'm okay to play, boss, Pep's going to play you. You know, if he, he trusts that, you, that you're, a, you're a grown man, Cancelo. You, you've raised your hand and said, I can still play. If you didn't want to play because of the circumstances with your family life, I think Pep would have gone, absolutely, mate. You've just been robbed a, 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 in a very horrible circumstance, like Jack Grealish as well. Go and sort yourself out. Go and be with your family and, 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 and get to terms with what's happened. Uh, that, I think Pep would have been perfectly fine with that. But what he's implying there is that Pep forced him to play. You know, it's, it feels like that. And it's like, don't forget that I still played after that. Like, fair play, awful what's happened to you. Terrible what's happened. It's disgusting that this goes on in the world. Terrible. It's shameful that it seems to be a lot of players getting targeted now, knowing when they're, uh, they're not at home and usually on the pitch as well, which is a shame. Outside of that, it's just like, that's not really City's fault that it's happened. And it's in that same, we're talking about leaving the club and his disres he's disrespecting the club and then goes on to mention this. I'm not comfortable with that because he's sort of implying that we, we have something to do with that. Not at all as far as I'm concerned. Next point. People will only remember this because Mr. Guardiola. There's you, there you go, Mr. Guardiola. That's like, it's very uh, formal, that, isn't it? Mr. Guardiola has much more strength than me when he says something and I prefer to keep to myself. I prefer to know that I am telling the truth. I feel fulfilled with what I did. Fair enough. But the rumours are very ugly. Very, very ugly. And I mean, they're never going to be proven true one way or the other unless a Manchester City player or a member of staff comes out and tells us. But the facts are, well, not the facts, sorry, take that back. The rumours are that he threw a ball at Pep Guardiola. He was annoyed at the amount of minutes, just like we saw the photograph of him sulking at Bayern Munich in their training camp. Apparently in Manchester City's training camp, he argued with Pep Guardiola and it got so heated that apparently he threw a ball at Pep Guardiola. For me, totally unacceptable. That's your manager, you respect him. I don't care whether you're arguing or not. There's an argument happening, fine. I think Pep Guardiola welcomes that. We've seen his treatment of players and his allowance of players to have a voice, to have an opinion. Kevin De Bruyne, came off that pitch the other day when he was having a right go at Pep and Pep was taking it. He was absorbing what Pep, what Kevin De Bruyne was saying. But Kevin De Bruyne was being respectful. You know, he wasn't throwing bottles about. He wasn't throwing his, his dummy out the pram. None of that nonsense. And, and Pep Guardiola came down and sat next to him and had a word with him and spoke to him. You know, two men speaking, having it out, hashing it out. Let's speak about this. But if he's throwing a ball at Pep Guardiola, sorry, that's childlike behaviour and isn't welcome at this football club. You, you, you're Manchester United. So, you know, those, those egos, those types of players that they sign, they don't do their homework on players. You've seen the types of characters that Manchester United have, you know, spitting their dummies out. We're not like that. You know, we do our homework. You know, if you, if you act like that, out you go, mate. Sorry, not good enough. And then another rumour is that he put his headphones in during a team talk. I mean, if you, you can't get much more disrespectful to the manager than that. The manager's speaking, giving the team talk, and he reportedly put his headphones in. Done. See you later. If any of that is true, even a fraction of that is true, that is disrespectful beyond belief. And I'll see you later, mate. So I have no problems with seeing him gone. Um, in terms of the player, clearly he's making it abundantly clear. I want to go. See you later. I'm done. I'm finished with this football club. Fine. Now we need to get a deal done. City do not want this to be a loan. Understandably, we can't let this drag out. You've gone through a loan spell at Bayern. Now another loan spell at Barcelona. This needs to be a sale or at least a loan with an obligation to buy at the end of it where we must get our... I mean, I'd take 20 million for him right now and say, see you later. Get rid of the problem. See you later. 20 million, 30 million. I I'd take that. You know, he's 29, don't forget. So he's got two or three years at the peak of his game left, at least. Um, still, but Barcelona president Juan Laporta said Cancelo and Felix will be staying at Barcelona next season. Whether that's on loan, City needs to hash out a deal with the club. Fine. I like the future of that position. Walker's, you know, he's at the end of his career or heading towards the end of his career. You've got potentially Jan Kuto and uh, Frimpong as well, players that are coming in. They excite me, you know. The idea, I still see some City fans claiming, get him back. 
you know, I imagine they're kids. I imagine these are City fans that are, you know, they're not thinking about the club. They're not thinking about, you know, the reputation of, of Pep Guardiola and the football club. You know, they're just thinking about that player and just very narrow-minded and getting him back. How many second stints of players coming back to clubs have ever been a success? You know, I can't think of many, you know. You think about Sean Wright Phillips, even it, it, there was no disrespect or drama, but the fact is he went to Chelsea, came back, and that second spell just wasn't quite as good as the first spell. Paul Scholes being pulled out of retirement, you know, to go back and play for Manchester United, embarrassingly so. He, people were running rings around him. That was a massive flop, you know. Mourinho going back to Chelsea, pff, fail. Ronaldo coming back to Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo going back there, he scored a few goals in the first couple of weeks and then after that, what a problem he became, he became a massive problem to the point where he's walking off down the tunnel, you know, talk about disrespect, these are the bad eggs that you don't want at Manchester City and we've done fantastically well at getting them, when they enter our club we get them out quickly and we've got a very good obstacle, a very good barricade to preventing these type of personalities coming in to our club now, to the point where Pep Guardiola has said it all along that he wants good boys, as in, it's a bit like derogatory, but I know what he means. What he's talking about is this type of problem. He doesn't want this. It's hard enough just being a football manager, let alone being an ego manager, you know, a, 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 a babysitter for some of these people. You know, it's like spitting the dummy out like this. It's just unwarranted. You know, you're going to get your move. See you later. All the best to you. Cancelo. Blues, what do you think? Get in the comments below. Would you have him back at City? Would you? Surely not. Surely not. Considering the, the person, the player, very good player, no denying that, but the person is just too much water has passed under the bridge now and that bridge has been knocked down. Get in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like and subscribe to Typical City and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now. Holding up so